date one, Valencia, Spain, oranges, paella, pancake flat, beautiful weather year round, a city that should be and is great for biking. And people do love to get around on two wheels. It's just not always the two wheels you're expecting. All about creating a great bike city in Spain with some unintended consequences coming up next. This is City Nerd, weekly content on cities and transportation. And you know, maybe it's just because I spent the last year living in Vegas where it's super rare to see anyone doing anything other than driving everywhere. But I'm finding some of the cities on the other side of the Atlantic are just a whole different world. And look, I'm just gonna go out on a limb and assume that you don't need one more YouTube channel telling you how great European cities are and how terrible US cities are. So the point here isn't to impress upon you how great Valencia is, even though it is true that it has killer year-round weather and that is basically what San Diego would be if San Diego had high-speed rail, good urban fabric, less annoying people, and cost like 20% as much. Instead, the purpose of today's video is to try to dig a little deeper and find out what's different here, since it may provide some clues as to things we can be doing differently in US cities to get better outcomes on things like biking and walking mode share, and by extension, healthcare outcomes, and maybe not burning the planet to the ground. And I'm going to spend some time talking about how the rise of the e-scooter plays into all that and whether it's a problem. So first, let's concede that Valencia has just about the perfect conditions to be a biking city. The climate is crazy good, typically about 300 sunny days a year, and very rarely is there a day with extreme cold or heat. Also, and this is kind of a big one, it is pancake flat. Trust me, I've been riding clunky three gear bike share bikes around the city for the past week and dreading the moment to happen upon any kind of grade change and it just never happens. Now, to be clear, Valencia's success as a biking city isn't just due to having lucked into great natural conditions. There's a lot of very intentional stuff the city has done, which I am gonna come back to later in the video. And I'm not just talking about the bike share system, which is not out of the ordinary for a metro area of close to 2 million. Although I do have questions about the pricing structure. And I'm not just talking about the fact that the city took its river, the Turia, diverted it to the south so the catastrophic flooding that occurred on the occasional year didn't devastate the city and converted the riverbed not into a freeway, which is what just about any US city would probably have done, but into an incredible linear park that's the social and cultural heartbeat of the entire city. Not to mention, Turia Park is a pretty efficient way to get to a lot of parts of the city by bike, since it's completely separated from traffic, meaning no traffic signals to wait at, just the odd conflict with runners, dog walkers, people dancing, soccer or I guess football enthusiasts, baseball enthusiasts. Did you guys know baseball is actually a thing in Spain? Little known facts right on this channel every Wednesday. Anyway, I want to know more about the bike culture here or maybe it's more accurate to say the micro mobility culture since eh, I hate to say it, but when it comes to Valencia's bike network, it's not just bikes. I mean, a bike lane is still basically a bike lane, but these days it feels almost archaic to call it that since there are so many different conveyances using it that just aren't bikes at all. So I realize I sort of play a nerd on YouTube, but Make no mistake, I am an actual nerd, so I had to go out and do some data collection to figure this all out. And look, I don't know Valencia, I've been here for like a week. So not knowing the city and trying to find a good active place to observe biking behavior, I went to the trusty Strava heat map to find a location where I could camp out, observe some human behavior and count some stuff. And what it came up with was the intersection of Blasco Ibanez and Gomez Ferrer, which is not only a primary gateway into the University of Valencia, 
but is also the site of one of the city's automatic bike counters. So it's a school morning between 9 and 10 a.m. I let the camera run for 20 minutes and countered everything that went through the intersection. And here's what I got. 62 bikes, including seven bike share bikes. I didn't see much in the way of e-bikes, but one thing I've noticed is there are a lot of folding bikes in Valencia. Helmets, eight out of the 62 people biking were wearing helmets, so mandatory helmet laws are not a thing in this city. Well, unless you're on an e-scooter. I counted 32 e-scooters, so a bit more than 50% of the bike total but almost every one of the riders was wearing a helmet, and it doesn't take much digging to find out that it's a requirement. You know, it is pretty telling that there's a mandatory helmet law for e-scooters, but not for bikes. And there's a reason for that. E-scooters with their small wheels and short wheelbases and high center of gravity are way more susceptible to poor roadway surface conditions like potholes than bikes are. A study in DC in 2020 showed that around two thirds of e-scooter related incidents were caused by physical features of the roadway, as opposed to collisions or near collisions. In Portland, 83% of e-scooter related ER visits were found to be from just falling and not any kind of collision. Let's go back and talk about one other really important thing I observed as I was studying the culture around micromobility in Valencia. If you've ever seen this transportation hierarchy pyramid, it's usually in a visioning or a planning document. It tells you what modes a city is trying to prioritize to promote things like climate action, public health, and safety. Well, observing how all this works in Valencia is kind of like seeing the hierarchy in action. Almost without fail, cars defer to bikes and scooters, and bikes and scooters defer to people walking. It's almost like a dance. This is a big deal anywhere, but maybe in Spain more than anywhere else because walking is so heavily woven into the urban culture. Partly because people here often live in apartments, so the streets and the plazas are like your living room. But also, traditions are strong, and Spaniards love their paseo, which is sort of like the time you go for a walk, often with your dog, sometime before the dinner hour, which is late here. So the respect for people walking is kind of ingrained, and if you're coming from the US, really striking and might periodically fill you with insane jealousy. Okay, in a minute I'm going to talk more about tangible steps Valencia has taken to get more people biking or e-scooting, because none of this is by accident. But first, quick reminder to drop a like on the video and potentially subscribe, even if you're an e-scooter person. I don't judge. Uh, yeah, I probably do usual ways to connect on the different apps, and there is now a Discord link to the Patreon. So all you patrons can do whatever it is you can do on Discord that you couldn't already do on Reddit or whatever, like critique my on-camera demeanor or oratory stylings. That's cool, I can handle it. Grumble. Okay, I said I wasn't gonna go on and on ad nauseum about how great European cities are, but guess what? I lied. Here's the thing though. Countries over here don't have this pathological opposition to doing just the most basic things for the collective good. Like even using the word collective probably gets you disqualified from running for political office in the US. Now, I don't have time in this video to get into the politics and how things are funded and all the other enormous differences that exist between the US and EU countries, but there is a clear commitment by the local government to make Valencia into a place where bike trips can easily replace car trips. It's very straightforward to just go into Street View and use the time slider to look at all the recent changes because the city, with a lot of assistance from the EU, has invested a lot in network expansion with 50% more lane miles added since just 2015. A lot of it by replacing general travel lanes, but more often by taking out parking spaces. And Valencia is getting results energy savings, 
decreases in noise exposure and increases in the local business activity. I was looking for cool bike network maps so I could show before and after comparisons and I didn't find that but I found something even cooler which is the city website has a quote unquote bike network map that actually has a striping plan for every street which I don't know how useful that is for route planning, not very from my experience, but man, I can nerd out on this for hours. Okay, let's summarize here. Bikes are good. Making parking your car more difficult and annoying, also good. E-scooters, I'm gonna say good, grudgingly, but protect your noggin because roadway surface conditions can be unpredictable. Oh, one last thing. Yeah, Valencia does have a bike share system, but you know what they don't have? Dockless bikes and scooters cluttering up sidewalks everywhere you go. The city apparently just said no to all that, and I'm gonna say that is just a colossal W for the local policymakers. And that's all I got. Thanks for joining, and thanks as always to the patrons, even the ones who mock my on-camera delivery. Your direct support means a lot, but full disclosure, I am absolutely not going to spend one Patreon dollar on public speaking lessons. But keep at it with the great topic suggestions. I'll be back with a new episode next week, and I'll see you then.